Hello everybody on YouTube, it's Michael here. And now we are nearing the end of the year 2023 and thought that I'll show at least a couple more keyboards before the end of the year. And right now in the next seven videos, I will be showing you the Yamaha EZ20 keyboard. Now I've got this keyboard just a little over a month ago um, not to keep, I bought it because I just wanted to do some videos of this keyboard but once I've done videos of it I am going to sell it because a few years ago I know I've done videos of the Yamaha EZ30 but this one is like um, more basic compared to the EZ30 like the EZ20 this keyboard has less features than EZ30 after doing videos of this keyboard, I will be showing another keyboard after this one, after the seven videos of the EZ20. Now, just to change the, su the sorry, just to change the subject really quickly. Some of you may know that yes, I've got my new Yamaha Genos 2 about a month ago. It's right here under the um, dust cover here. Um, I do have plans to make lots of videos of it next year. So starting next year, my main focus will be doing videos of Genos 2. I am absolutely loving it so far and can't wait to show you the tutorials, the showing the sounds and styles and doing song covers on it, etc. So yes, moving on back to the EZ20, the first video will be the, doing a tutorial of this keyboard, which will be this video. The next video after that will be showing the 100 sounds. The next two videos after that will be showing the 100 accompaniment styles. And then the last three videos of this keyboard, I will be doing then the, the videos of the 100 demonstration songs. And also, before I start the first video of the EZ20. I just want to do a quick mention to someone on YouTube. Now, I don't usually do mentions slash shout outs, but I promised him that I will give him a mention. Um, we have been talking to each other lately on the um, Facebook Messenger and we've been calling each other and having a good chat. I've even um, chat. I, I was even talking to one of his friends, which um, they're really nice guys. Um, and I just want to give a mention to George Wu. He's a really nice guy. Um, he does some really good videos on, on YouTube, like basic videos, but they're really good to watch. So check out his channel. Please do subscribe to him. His link, um, the link on his channel will be in the description. So yeah, just a mention to George Wu. The link to his channel will be in the description. So please do subscribe to him. I'm sure that I'm sure that it will help him out a bit. And now here is the tutorial of the Yamaha EZ20 keyboard. Thank you very much for watching and hope you enjoy. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to show you on this tutorial of the Yamaha EZ20 keyboard and that is the overall functions here with this um, overall button here we have the ABC slash do re mi guide grade talking transpose tuning and so on so I will show that to you so first of all we just press the overall button and then we have the ABC guide we can toggle it on and off but that's to do with the lessons of the songs. So I will show you that function later on in this video. And we move on, we have the grade. We can toggle that on and off. Again, it's to do with the songs with the lesson function. So I will show you that also later on in this video. And then we have the talking. Okay, now with, with the talking, we can toggle it on and off. So, for example, if I press the ABC Do Re Mi button, so we press this. ABC Do Re Mi off. 
or dictionary. Dictionary. Let's just go back to the talking. But now, if we toggle the talking to off, when we press the button, A, B, C, Do, Re, Mi, there's no talking. And we press dictionary. Again, no talking. So let's just put that, let's just set that back to on. Talking. There you go, talking. It says talking when it's toggled back on. Uh, talking. I didn't know that. Um, okay, so now, go moving on the functions, we have transpose, so that we can transpose the keyboard. So... So it goes down to minus 12, up to 12. And if you want to get the default transpose, we just press these two simultaneously to get the default transpose. Okay, next function, we have tuning. So we can tune the keyboard. So, sorry, I know my hands are in the way, so I'll move somewhere where it's more, oh, sorry, there we go. So. So it goes up to 50 and we press it we press these two buttons simultaneously to get the default tuning and we can have it down to minus 50. So that's the tuning function. And next we have a comp volume. Yep, a comp slash song volume. So let me just play a style. going to turn down the volume of that style. And I'm going to turn it up. Let me press these two to get the default volume. And it also says song volume, so it also applies to the song. So let me just play a song and I'll show you an example. Song volume. Okay, so that's the comp slash song volume. And now, finally, we have with the overall functions, we have. Um, A comp volume. The last one of the overall is the metronome volume. So we have this metronome here. And we can toggle the volume of that metronome. And there you go. And that is the overall functions. There's a, a few which I haven't showed yet, but I will show later on in this video. So that is the overall functions. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is the style control. So we have this, these buttons here. We have the a comp on off, sync start, start stop intro slash ending and main slash autofill which is your variations and of course the tempo tap so i will show that to you okay so the style isn't turned on at the moment so but now i turn the comp on so now and now with sync start we press, the we press the sync start button and now the keyboard waits for us to play on the left hand side of the keyboard to start the style. And now we have the main auto because this keyboard has two variations. Now we move on to variation B. And we 
press it again to go back to variation A. And now let me show you something else. So we just press sync start and intro. So we get a, a intro for the style. And then we press it again for the ending. But also another thing that I'm going to show you with the ending is that you press the ending button once and then when the ending plays you press it again and then that ending will become slower the tempo will slow down so press it once and then we press it again and the tempo slows down Okay, lastly with the style controls is the tempo tap. So the tempo tap where we have to like do a sort of a tap to get in time with the tempo. So for, so for example, or Also with the tempo, if you press the dialer button simultaneously, there we go, we'll get the default tempo of that style. And there you go, and that is the style controls. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is song control, using the exact same buttons as I did with the style controls, these buttons here. So we are going to select song. I'm going to do the first song. There we go. And with the song controls, we have A, B, repeat, pause, start, stop, rewind and fast forward and also tempo tap. So I will show that to you. So first of all, we do the rewind and fast forward. Okay, so that's the um, fast forward and rewind. And uh, we have the pause button. So we can pause the song whilst it's in the middle of it playing. So that's the pause. And now we have the A, B repeat, which is very useful if you want to like learn parts of certain songs, I will show that to you. So let me just, um, so. Okay, so upon getting to know how to use that, um, the repeat. So you press the um, repeat button once to start the bar that you want to want it to repeat and you press press it again for the bar that you want it to end so let me just give you an example so i am going to do measure one i'm going to start that so when it gets to measure one i will press the repeat button and then i'm going to um, press it again on measure four and now what that should do, that will repeat measures one to four. So it will just keep repeating itself until you press repeat, until you turn it off. Let me do another example of the repeat function. I'll use the same song, but I'll 
I'll use the same song, but I'll go further into the song. So we'll repeat on that one. 17 to 20, so I'm going to press it again. So now that, that will repeat bar 17 and 20 to 20. Hopefully you can see on the screen here. Okay, so that's the A, B repeat. So if there's a bar that you want to um, start to repeat, so for example, we got we went on to say bar four, and you want the repeat um, sequence to start, you press it once, and then say measure eight, press it again, and the keyboard will repeat continuously measures four to eight. It's very useful when you want to learn and pick up parts of certain songs. And finally, we have the tempo tap as shown on the style control. OK, I will just press these buttons here simultaneously to get the default tempo for that song. And there you go. And that is the song controls using the same exact buttons using for using style control as well. It depends on what section you have. So if you have style, this will act as a style control. If you select song, this will act, these buttons will act as song controls. Okay, so that is the song controls. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and this is just going to be a quick one, and that is the metronome and portable grand. Okay, so I'm just going to um, show the metronome first. So we have the metronome. Let's go to a style and make the um, faster. Okay. So. So that's the metronome. And now if you notice on the metronome button, there's this icon, which is the press and hold for a while. So if you press and hold the button for a second, you'll get a, a function related to that button as shown in quite a few keyboards I've showcased in the past, like the EZ30, the PSR 170, the um, PSR 350. They all have the press and hold for a while buttons. I won't bother showing the press and hold on this keyboard because only being is that there's only one button that has the press and hold function and that is metronome so yes using this um press and hold the time sig is this gives you the time signature function so we press and hold that and you can have like different time signatures with the metronome so at the moment it's on four beat so i'll press the metronome hopefully you can hear that Or if we go to free, so now the metronome acts as if it's playing a sort of a, a waltz beat, or two, or one. Or if you if you put it onto zero, then it won't have any high pitched beeps like this. The metronome time time signature goes up to. goes up to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we just press the dialers um, simultaneously to get the default um, metronome time signature. Okay, so that's the um, metronome. And now we have the portable grand so I've selected a different style, different voice, and 
different song. But if you want to go back to the piano sound, simply just press the portable grand button and it will take you straight to take you straight to the piano voice. And just like on say like the PSR 170 and that, let's see, if we, if we select style, there we go. It also takes us straight to a pianist style and let's go to song. Oh, let me just show you the style. So. And upon pressing the portable grand, let's go to song takes us straight to a piano song. So that's the portable grand, which takes you straight to the piano sound, also gives you a piano style and a piano song. So there you go. And that is the metronome with the time signature function and the portable grand. Okay, so now the next thing that I am going to show you, I'm going to show you two things in fact, I am going to show you the ABC slash Do Re Mi and the light on slash off. So um, with the ABC Do Re Mi, so let's say we, we've got the sound and we've got the piano sound. But if we press the ABC button, ABC. Now the keys will do this. C, e, e, F, G, e, F, G. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B flat, B flat, A flat, F sharp, E flat, C sharp. So that's the A B C. And then we press the button again, and that will call up the Do Re Mi. 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 Do Do Re Mi. Do Do Re Mi. So that's the A, B, C, Do, Re, Mi. Oh. And now we have the light on and off. Now, basically, because this keyboard has guide lamps. Now, the guide lamps helps you, like it, it guides you into how to play songs using the built in lessons and that, which is very ideal for beginners. But if you want to turn off the guide lamps, now the screen, hopefully you can see it, is set to off. Now, when I play the keys, there's no guide lamps. We just press it again. Follow the light. And it says, follow the lights. And now we get the key, the guide lamps again. So there you go, and that is the ABC Do Re Mi and the lights on and off. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, um, let me just play one of the keys. Because this example that I'm going to show you is exactly the same thing as I showed on the Yamaha EZ30 which I showcased a few years ago. Now, basically what it is, is that if you leave the keyboard idle for about approximately three minutes, so don't play any of the keys, don't press any of the buttons, and then the keyboard will say, excuse me, wanna play? And then the guide lamps here will um, play one of the 100 built-in demonstration songs. So, for that to happen, you need to not touch the keyboard for approximately three minutes. And it will say, excuse me, wanna play? See, I've, I'm timing myself now. It's just been over a minute. So it's one of those things that we do have to wait. It's now been roughly a minute. 
whilst I'm waiting for the ne them next two minutes, um, yes, the EZ20 and EZ30, they, they are both similar to the fact that they both have guide lamps. The EZ30 is, of course, much better sound quality and has more sounds and styles and has the function to download MIDI files from the internet and then transfer them onto the keyboard. Now, with the EZ20, you can't do that, unfortunately. The EZ20 is basically the same as my PSR170, another keyboard I showcased a few years ago. It's basically the PSR170 because it doesn't have touch sensitive keys. Um, the sound quality is basically the same, so like the same old sound chip. The only, the, the major difference is that it has guide lamps. So that's just a little bit of a, a trivia. We're now two minutes in. We've got to wait another minute for the keyboard to play on its own. We just got to not touch the keyboard. Not long now. Just a little more time. So we just got to hang in there. We're now roughly two and a half minutes in. So another 30 seconds and then the keyboard will say, excuse me, want to play. As you will see very shortly. Okay, let's do a countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Wanna play? There we go. Check this out. And then what that does is um, the keyboard is playing one of the 100 built-in demonstration songs silently. Which is quite useful if you just want to have it on display and then having the, the, guide light, the guide lights do that. So that's what the keyboard does when it is left idle for three minutes. It will say, want to play? Or on the EZ30, it will be, excuse me, want to play? And the keyboard does that. Okay, then um, when we press the, when we press anything like buttons and keys, which I will show you now, the keyboard will put itself back to normal. So there you go. And that is the sort of um, silent play when you leave the keyboard idle for approximately three minutes. The keyboard will start playing itself silently. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is the multi-pads. Now, this keyboard doesn't have any multi-pad buttons, like the PSR170, but it does have multi-pads using these keys here. As you, hopefully you can see, but you have the multi-pad, a complement, and so on. Um, the um, multi-pads are only effective when you play a song. So we're going to select a song and now the keyboard should have the multi-pads here. Oh, let me just go to another song. Here we go. Maybe if I press the demo button. There, I know there is a um, multi-pad function. Um, I just need to figure out how to... Uh, Oh, you need to play the song. Play. Oh, sorry, my bad. You've got to have the song play. Wanna play? Check this out. Excellent. Very good. Good. Try. So what I will do, and another thing, you can't control the chords of the multi-pads. The, co the, the um, chords are dependent of what the song is. So... Let me just go back to um, that piano song. Uh, here we go. So, doesn't seem to have the multi pads on that one, but on this one it does. Wanna play? Check this out. 
Okay, and let's just um, select a different song. So let's just say this one, for example. So, like I said, you can't control the chords of the multi pads. You can only control the um, whatever the song's playing. So it's on a C chord right now, and then it's going to go to an E flat. Let me just turn on. Um, let me just turn the song volume completely down so that you can hear the multi pads. So here we go. Wanna play? Wanna play? Check this out. Excellent. Very good. 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 Try again. Try again. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. So you've got 19 different multi pads. So, wanna play? One, check this out. Two, excellent. Three, very good. Four, good. Five, try again. Six, one, two, seven, one, two, eight, three. one, two, nine, three, four, one, two, ten, one, two, three, four, go. Eleven, go. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Okay. So there you go. That is the multi pads. But the multi pads, um, the multi pads um, can only, only be um, played when a song is being played. So, so for example, that. And the multi pads, unlike the, the, the unlike the PSR 170, you can't control the chords. You can only do the chords dependent on the song that's playing. So there you go, and that is the multi pads. Although I prefer the use of the multi pads better on the PSR 170 than on the EZ20, in my opinion. But it's still playable. You can still mess about with the um, songs. Just a like, sort of a, a, like a mess about with the multi pads. Right, so there you go, and that is multi pads. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and this is going to be a really quick one, and that is on how to disable the demo button. So this here demo button, when we press it, it will play a demonstration song. And now, in order to disable the demo button, all we got to do is turn off the keyboard and we turn the keyboard on again whilst holding the demo button. And now, upon doing that, you go to press demo. The button is disabled. See? No song. I'm guessing that this was quite useful in schools when kids keep playing the demo button when the teachers don't want you to. So that's a way to disable the demo button. OK, so in order to enable the demo button, simply just turn off the keyboard and back on again without holding any buttons. And then the demo button will be enabled. So there you go. And that's just a quick tip on how to disable the demo button. OK, so now the next thing that I'm going to show you, and that is dictionary. And the dictionary is very useful when you want to practice chords. So we just press the dictionary button. Dictionary. And now we are in the dictionary function. And 
now to practice the chords. We have these different sort of chord types here, like major, minor, minor seven, major seven, etc. And then we have the root chords like C, D, E, F, G, etc. Okay, so we're going to select C. So just um, have C major. And these guide lamps here will light up and it will make a dinging noise when you press the right chord. So that's not the right chord, but this is. Or maybe if I want to have it as a minor. Or minor seven. So, oh, sorry, I meant major seven. Or minor seven. And we can do the same thing with other keys as well, like F minor seven. Or maybe just have a major and some other chords as well. So, um, so that's the dictionary in which you can use to practice your chords. We have the chord types here, like major, minor, major seven, minor seven, and all sorts of other chord types here. And we have the root chords. So like, say for example, like C, D, E, F, G, or B flat, A flat, F sharp, etc. And you can use a dictionary to practice the chords. Um, yes, yeah, so on the PSO 170, it will show you on the screen what notes to press. But on the EZ20, the guide lamps will show you what keys to press so that you can practice your chords. So there you go. And that is dictionary. Okay, so now the last thing that I am going to show you on this tutorial of the Yamaha EZ20 keyboard, and that is the lesson function here. So we have three built-in lessons so we've got lesson one lesson two and lesson three which um i will show to you and also the three built-in lessons apply to the left hand right hand and if you want to play both hands you press these two buttons simultaneously which i'll show you so let me just select a song okay and i'll go to lesson one two and three now lesson one Lesson, lesson one is timing so it doesn't matter what notes you play it, it can be a right note or a wrong note you just need to be in time and lesson two lesson two lesson off is waiting hopefully you saw that on the screen and now waiting is that the song will pause itself and waits for you to play the right note and now lesson three lesson three is minus one lesson off so the song itself doesn't play the melody you've got to play that yourself and there's other things that I'm going to show you um, during this lesson um, part. And that's the, um, <clears throat> sorry, the grade and the ABC do re mi. So ABC and the grade. So when the grade's on, anyway, I'll go through that with you. So we're going to start with lesson one, timing. So it doesn't matter what notes I play, it's got to be in perfect timing. So I could do this. Or I can press the right notes.
Very good. Very good. Okay, so we've got, I've got a, a very good rank. Lesson off. Because um, the ranks on this keyboard, we have like, I think it would be just like on the PSO 170. If you're not playing very good, you'll get the okay. If you play reasonably good, it'll be good. If you play better, it'll be very good. And if you play it perfectly, you'll get excellent. Okay, moving on. We have lesson two, waiting. Lesson two. Where the keyboard waits for us to play the right note. Another quick thing is that at the moment I am doing the right hand lesson. I will also show examples of the left hand and both hands. Lesson two. Excellent. I get excellent on that one. Lesson off. Another thing that I would like to show you with lesson two, and it only applies to lesson two, right hand only, and that's the ABC slash Do Re Mi. So it's currently off, but if we set it to on and go to lesson two, the keyboard will say the notes just like the ABC Do Re Mi button here. So I will show that to you. Lesson two. I've got the ABC slash Do Re Mi on. The keyboard says the note. Let me do another example. I'm going to select a, another song with the ABC. So that's the ABC slash Do Re Mi function. We're going to turn that off now, but that only applies to lesson two with the right hand. Okay, moving on to the lessons. We have lesson three, minus one, where the song doesn't play the um, melody. You've got to do that yourself and be in perfect time as well and play the right notes. So it's basically lesson one and lesson two in one. Lesson three. Got to do it in time and in the right notes as well. If I don't play, the keyboard doesn't play. Unless I play the right notes.
I get the rank of? Very good. Very good. Okay. Lesson off. Just one more function that I'd like to show you within the overall. Okay, so I've showed the ABC slash Do Re Mi, and now I want to show you grade. Now the grade is currently on, but if you set the grade to off, you won't get a grade at the end of the lesson. I will show that to you. So I'm going to do lesson three again. Lesson three. There you go. Notice that I didn't get a grade at the end of the song, whether it would be okay, good, very good, and excellent. So let's just turn the grade back on and we do the songs. Okay, so that's the lesson one, two, and three on the right hand side of the keyboard. And now we'll do the same for the left hand. Again, just like in the right hand. Lesson one, two, and three is the timing, waiting. Yeah, timing, waiting, and minus one. And then we gotta. Now it's gonna be the left hand side of the keyboard. One, two, one, two, three, go. Wanna play? Wanna play? Okay, Let's so. Not. not that song, I suppose. Uh, I think we should select a different song. So let's just. Um, I'm just gonna go browse through some songs. Like, let's take this one, for instance, where we got chords here. OK, we're going to do the left hand side lessons with that song. So we just press lesson one. Which is timing, so it doesn't matter what chords I play on the left hand, as long as it's in time. One, two, one, two, three, four. Try again. Try again. Lesson off. Oh, hang on. Uh, what am I doing? Lesson off. Yeah, left. There you go. Sorry about that. I've got to make sure that I press lesson and left. Lesson off. Okay, so yes, I've got to make sure that I press lesson, lesson one. and left. Lesson off. Okay, so now we go to lesson two. Lesson two. Which waits for us to play the right chords. I won't do it all the way, it's just an example.
lesson off. Okay, so that's the lesson two waiting for the um, left hand side. And now we're going to go to lesson three, left hand side. Lesson three. We've got to be in time and play the right chords. Lesson off. Lesson off. Okay, now that's the lesson one, two, and three for left and right hand examples. Now, finally, I am going to do both hands. And in, in order to do that, it'll be, I think that will be lesson four, which is basically lesson three with both hands. So we need to press these two buttons simultaneously so that we need to play with both hands. So I'll show that to you. Here we go. We press these two. Oh, yeah. Lesson three. Lesson three. Oh. Lesson off. Okay, that wasn't that wasn't a good start, was it? Um. Okay. So. Lesson one. Lesson one. Okay. Lesson off. Um, with the um, both hands also applies to lesson one, two, and three. So let me just say, lesson two. waiting left, right. Lesson off. Okay, let's do lesson three both hands for the final example. Lesson three. Oh, I messed up there. Gets a bit hard, <laughs> especially when you haven't played the song before. Try again. Try again. Yes, that wasn't very good, but that's just Lesson okay. That's just an example of the um, both hands. So there you go. And that is the lesson function, which we have three levels of lessons. Um, timing, waiting and minus one for both left and right hands and also both hands as well, as I showed on there. Although it's a little bit harder. Because I haven't really played that song anyway. Um, but yeah, that's the lesson function. One, two, three, left, right and both hands. So there you go. And that is the lesson functions in which the lessons apply to all 100 of the built in demo songs. OK, so this is now the end of the tutorial video of the Yamaha EZ20 keyboard. I do hope you have enjoyed this video and that you have found this tutorial useful. So please do write back to me and tell me what you think. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next video in which I will be showing you the 100 sounds.